the 2300 days in the book of Daniel. This is the center of our study today. Let's read Daniel 8 verse 14. And he said unto me, Unto 2300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Each Jew clearly understood the meaning of the cleansing of the earthly sanctuary. It occurred on the Day of Atonement, which was the Day of Judgment. I give you the background of the cleansing of the sanctuary in the Old Testament. Leviticus 16 explains how the cleansing of the sanctuary in the Day of Atonement was performed. Day of Atonement comes from the Hebrew word Yom Kippur. Yom means day in Hebrew, and Kippur is translated to atonement. Day of Atonement perform once a year. The Day of Atonement, or Yom Kippur, as revealed in Leviticus 16, is the most solemn Old Testament ritual. It is deliberately placed in the heart of the book of Leviticus, which is itself at the center of the five books of Moses. Day of Atonement is a yearly cleansing. Throughout the year, all kinds of sins and ritual impurities were transferred to the sanctuary. With the Day of Atonement comes the time for their removal. There are three main parts to the Day of Atonement. The first part of the Day of Atonement. The purification offering for the priest. The high priest slaughtered a bull for his sins, making sure that he, the priest, would be clean when entering the sanctuary so that he could perform the ritual to cleanse it. The second part. The purification offering of the goat, for the Lord, Leviticus. 16. 8. During the year, the purification offerings, brought, all the sins of the Israelites into the sanctuary. The Day of Atonement was the time to remove these sins from the sanctuary, this process was done through the blood of the goat, for the Lord. The third part. The elimination ritual with the live goat for Azazel. God wanted to get the sins of his people away from the sanctuary and the camp. Therefore, another live goat was sent out into the desert. The effect is clearly described in verses 16 and 20. The high priest made atonement with the blood of the Lord's goat cleansing the entire sanctuary. The same procedure also effected the purification of the people so that, when the sanctuary was cleansed from all the people's sins, the people themselves were cleansed too. In this sense the Day of Atonement was unique, for only on this day were both the sanctuary and the people cleansed. Now we know how the sanctuary was cleansed during the Old Testament. Let's go back to the book of Daniel. Daniel 8 verse 14. And he said unto me, Unto two thousand and three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Yes Daniel understood the concept of the cleansing of the sanctuary and the judgment, but he did not understand about the two thousand three hundred days, he was confused about it. Daniel 8 verse 27. In Daniel chapter 9, Angel Gabriel coming to explain to Daniel the 2300 day prophecy. O oh Daniel, I have now come forth to give you skill to understand, Daniel, 922. Let's now understand the 2300 days, whether it is a literal number or symbolic. And why is it so important to know the 2300 days? It is important for us to know the 2300 days so that we can know when the sanctuary will be cleansed or when the day of judgment will begin. The 2300 days are not literal days. One prophetic day equals one literal year. Ezekiel 4 verse 6. And when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days. I have appointed thee each day for a year. Numbers 14 verse 34. After the number of the days in which ye searched the land, even forty days, each day for a year, shall ye bear your iniquities, even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. It is very clear in the verses that one day equals one year in the prophetic day. 
We understand that the 2300 days of Daniel are not literal days, but 2300 literal years because they are prophetic days. Some argue that the 2300 days are literal days. They also believe that this little horn of Daniel 8 applies to the Seleucid military leader Antiochus Epiphanes. 216 to 164 BC, who attacked Jerusalem and defiled the Jewish temple, even though 2300 days does not fit his time frame. This interpretation, however, is contrary to the angel's clear instruction that the vision applies to the time of the end. Daniel chapter 8 verse 17. So he came near where I stood. And when he came, I was afraid, and fell upon my face. But he said unto me, Understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. Antiochus Epiphanes certainly did not live at the time of the end. So the little horn of Daniel 8 cannot be applied to him, even the 2300 days does not fit the time frame of Antiochus Epiphanes. In Daniel 8, Gabriel begins his explanation of the 2300-day prophecy. He names the ram as representing Media Persia and the male goat as representing Greece Daniel 8. Verses 20, 21. Though not named, as are the two powers before it, the next entity, the little horn, is obviously Rome. Daniel 8 verse 9, 23, 24. He then depicts a kind of religio-political phase of Rome, which would cast down the truth to the ground. Daniel 8 verses 10 to 12, 25. And interfere with Christ's heavenly ministry. Daniel 8 verses 10 to 12. The cleansing of the sanctuary in Daniel 8 14, the climax of the chapter, is God's answer to the challenge of earthly and religious powers that have attempted to usurp the authority of God. It is part of God's divine solution to the sin problem. The angel Gabriel, who appeared in Daniel 8, appears now in Daniel 9 and says to him, At the beginning of your supplications the command went out, and I have come to tell you, for you are greatly beloved, therefore consider the matter, and understand the vision, Daniel 9 verse 23. King of Babylon for 70 years. The angel plainly instructed Daniel to consider the matter, and understand the vision, Daniel 9 verse 23. What matter, and what vision? Because there is no vision recorded in Daniel 9. The angel Gabriel must be speaking of the portion of the vision in Daniel 8 that the prophet did not understand, the vision of the 2300 days, Daniel 8 27. Gabriel continues in Daniel 9 verses 24 to 27. 24 inches 70 weeks are decreed about your people and your holy city. Verse 24 inches 70 weeks are decreed about your people and your holy city. To finish the transgression, to put an end to sin, and to atone for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal both vision and profit, and to anoint a most holy place. Verse 25 Know therefore and understand that from the going out of the word to restore and build Jerusalem to the coming of an anointed one, a prince, there shall be seven weeks. Then for sixty-two weeks it shall be built again with squares and moat, but in a troubled time. Verse 26 And after the sixty-two weeks, an anointed one shall be cut off and shall have nothing. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Its end shall come with a flood, and to the end there shall be war. Desolations are decreed. Verse 27 And he shall make a strong covenant with many for one week, and for half of the week he shall put an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abominations shall come one who makes desolate, until the decreed end is poured out on the desolator. The first portion of this prophecy relates to God's people, the Jews. Seventy weeks are determined for your people, the Jewish nation, Dan. 924. Again, in Bible prophecy, 
one prophetic day equals one literal year Ezekiel. 4. 6. Numbers. 1434. Friends, in Daniel and Revelation, when you have symbolic imagery, you usually have a symbolic time prophecy, as well. One of the ways we can be certain that the day-year principle of prophecy applies here is that when we use it in Daniel's prophecy, each event on the timeline comes out perfectly. If we apply this principle, 70 weeks are composed of 490 days. Since one prophetic day equals one literal year, 490 days are 490 literal years. Gabriel tells Daniel that 490 years are cut off, the literal meaning of the Hebrew word chathic, sometimes translated, determined. Cut off from what? It could only be the other time prophecy alluded to here. The 2300 days of Daniel 814. These 490 years, which are a time prophecy, are directly linked back to the time prophecy of Daniel 814 the only part of the vision left unexplained in Daniel 8 and the only time prophecy in Daniel 8, as well. Thus, we can see that Gabriel, with this prophecy, is coming to help Daniel understand what he didn't understand in the previous chapter. The 2300 Days Gabriel began this 490-year prophecy with an event that was extremely important to Daniel and to the Jews, the command to restore and build Jerusalem. Daniel 9 verse 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going out of the word to restore and build Jerusalem. Though various decrees had been passed regarding Jerusalem. In Ezra 7, we discover that the decree passed in 457 BC, allowed the Jews not only to return to their homeland but also to establish themselves as a religious community, Ezra 7 13, 27. Verse 26, An anointed one shall be cut off and shall have nothing. It is significant to note that Artaxerxes' decree was issued in the autumn of 457 BC. From this decree, in 457 BC, to the Messiah, according to Daniel, would be 69 weeks, or 483 years. If we begin at 457 BC, and move forward on history's timeline, we arrive at AD. 27. The word Messiah means, the Anointed One. In AD. 27. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, was baptized. Daniel predicted hundreds of years in advance the exact year for the baptism of Christ. Matthew 3 13-17 Daniel predicted hundreds of years in advance the exact year for the baptism of Christ, the time at which Jesus would begin his three and a half years of ministry. And after the sixty-two weeks Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself, Daniel 9:26. The Messiah would be, cut off, or crucified. The verse adds, but not for himself. In other words, the death of Christ on Calvary's cross was for us, not for himself, which is why Paul could write. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5, 8. In Daniel 9:27. We read that in the middle of the week, the last seven years, Christ would bring an end to sacrifice and offering. In the middle of this 70th week, in A.D. 31, Christ confirmed the everlasting covenant with his blood by dying on the cross, and the sacrificial system lost any and all prophetic significance. These prophecies reveal that Christ, the Messiah, would be crucified and cause the sacrificial system to cease its prophetic importance in the spring of A.D. 31. These predictions were fulfilled in every detail. Exactly at Passover, when the high priest was offering the Passover lamb, Christ was sacrificed for us. Now let's proceed to 1844. What does it have to do with the 2300 years of prophecy? 
You are probably familiar with 1844. When you hear 1844, the first thing that comes to your mind is William Miller who preached that Christ would return in 1844, but Christ did not return that year. And the result of that movement is great disappointment because Christ did not come back that year. Friends, what really happened in 1844? What is the connection of 1844 with the 2300 years prophecy? Let's begin. The year 1844. Let's make it clear, here. First we read 2300 days Daniel 814. These 2300 days, these are 2300 literal years. Because these are prophetic days. One day equals one literal year in a prophetic day. Ezekiel 4, 6 and Numbers 1434. Second we read. 70 weeks in Daniel 924. In one week we have seven days. So 70 weeks times 7 equals 490 days. Since these are prophetic days. These are 490 literal years. Third we read. 7 weeks in Daniel 925. 7 times 7 equals 49 literal years. Fourth. We read 62 weeks in Daniel 925, 26. 62 times 7 equals 434 literal years. Fifth. We read one week and for the one half of that week. Seven years, one half of the seven years three one half years. If you add them all. 49 plus 434 plus 7 equals equals 490 years. That's what Daniel 924 says 70 weeks. That's it. 70 weeks, which are composed of 69 weeks and one week. And that one week is divided in half. Just plug in the date, 457 BC, at the beginning, and with simple math, yes, we come to 1844 on the timeline. What are the important things that happened or will happen in these years? The counting of the 2300 years began in 457 BC. We have the 2300 years timeline the sanctuary shall be cleansed. Next, 70 weeks or 490 years cut off from the 2300 years. Then, 7 weeks or 49 years. 457 BC to 408 BC. In 457 BC, the decree, the 70 weeks in Daniel 9 begin. 408 BC, the rebuilding of Jerusalem, 62 weeks, 434 years. The Jews had to begin preparing the Messiah the Prince, Jesus, who would be anointed in his baptism. In 27 AD, one week one half week the death of jesus in 31 a.d jesus confirmed the covenant with his blood thus annulling the old sacrifice system one half week the martyrdom of stephen in 34 a.d when the sanhedrin ordered the stoning of stephen israel rejected the covenant as a nation 1810 years 1844 a.d the purification of the sanctuary. We could call this last period, the time of the Gentiles. After 2300 years, the investigative judgment begins. Everyone in the universe can see God's justice as he redeems us. So in the vision of Daniel, unto 2300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed, Daniel 8:14. That happened in 1844. After 2300 years or after 1844 the investigative judgment begins. Everyone in the universe can see God's justice as he redeems us. Thank you for listening.